Hello, my name is Dr. Joseph Rajra and welcome to this lesson segment that explains the assignment of electron configurations to atoms and ions and in particular those involving the first transition series. As you have probably seen, these types of questions are in just about every NCEA Level 3 chemistry exam that is on this assessment standard. Now, let's look at this periodic table on which I have also written at the bottom the different types of orbitals such as S, P and D that go with each quantum level or shell and the number of orbitals of each of those types. So for instance, S orbitals only come in lots of 1, while P orbitals come in lots of 3 and D orbitals come in lots of 5. Also, the first quantum level can only have an S orbital. The second quantum level has S orbitals as well as P orbitals while the third quantum level has S, P and D orbitals. Also keep in mind that each orbital can accommodate a maximum of only two electrons. The Aufbau principle, by the way Aufbau is the German word that means progressively building upwards. So. This Aufbau principle says that as atoms have more and more electrons, they fill the orbitals by beginning with the lowest energy orbital first and then progressively moving into orbitals with higher and higher energies. Now, though it hasn't been drawn to scale, I have now added a diagram that shows the comparative energies of these different orbitals to explain how electrons fill these orbitals according to the Aufbau principle. While the increase in energy of the orbitals is mostly in the order of their principal quantum or shell number, note the deviation from this when the s orbital of the fourth quantum level has a lower energy than the d orbitals of the third quantum level. This is why once the p orbitals of the third quantum level have been filled with the 18 electrons of argon, the 19th electron in the next element potassium actually goes into the 4s orbital instead of a 3d orbital. For the same reason, the 20th electron of calcium also goes into the 4s instead of a 3d orbital. Why is that? Because the 4s orbitals are lower in energy than the 3d orbitals. It's only once we get to scandium that the 4s orbital has been filled and electrons can now enter the 3d orbitals. So, by filling these orbitals with electrons, starting with the lowest energy orbital and then proceeding upwards, we can represent the electron configuration of scandium as 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, then it is 4s2, and then 3d1. The configuration of the inner electrons of scandium ending with the complete filling of the 3p orbitals and which I have now enclosed in square brackets is also the electron configuration of the inert gas atom argon. So it is often written in the condensed form AR in square brackets 4s2 3d1. That's a more condensed way of showing the electron configuration of scandium. Before we proceed further, there are two important exceptions you need to note about this orbital filling pattern with electrons of the atoms in the first transition series. Now, these exceptions are chromium and copper. With these two exceptions, chromium and copper, 
one of the 4s electrons leaves that orbital and instead moves into a 3d orbital. Now remember that's only with these two exceptions chromium and copper in that first transition series. So the electron configuration of chromium is not AR 4s2 3d4 as one might initially think because it is one of those two exceptions. So the electron configuration of chromium is actually AR 4s1 3d5. That is because one of those 4s electrons moves up into a 3d orbital. Similarly with copper which is the other exception. Its electron configuration is not AR 4s2 3d9 but is instead AR 4s1 3d10 and again it's because with this being an exception one of those 4s electrons has moved into a 3d orbital. You don't need to worry about explaining the reason for this because there isn't a simple explanation that can adequately account for this. Since I have these electron configurations, I can now fill in the electron configurations for copper and chromium in our table. For chromium, we can write that as AR 4s1 3d5. Remember that was one of those exceptions and similarly we can write in the electron configuration of copper Cu as being AR 4s1 3d10. You can now pause my explanation and try to complete the electron configurations of vanadium chemical symbol V and iron chemical symbol Fe before resuming to compare your answers with my explanation. Firstly, note that neither vanadium V nor iron Fe are the exceptions chromium and copper. Since the atomic number of vanadium is 23, V atoms have 23 electrons. The inner 18 electrons have the same configuration as argon. Then 23 minus 18 of the remaining 5 outer electrons, 2 will go into filling the 4s orbital and the remaining 3 electrons then enter 3 separate d orbitals. So its electron configuration will be AR 4s2 3d3. The reason that these three d electrons of vanadium enter separate d orbitals is because electrons repel each other and it is more energetically favorable for electrons to be spaced further apart. So each orbital of the same energy needs to have at least one electron before a second electron goes into an orbital that already has an electron. Okay, now the next example, iron. Iron with its atomic number of 26 has 26 electrons. Again, the first 18 electrons in the inner shells conform to the electron configuration of argon. Of the remaining 26 minus 18, 8 electrons, 2 will go into filling the 4s orbital. The remaining 6 electrons then occupy the 3d orbitals with 4 of these 3d orbitals having only 1 electron but 1 of the 3d orbitals will have 2 electrons. So the electron configuration of iron is argon AR 4s2 3d6.
Using vanadium 3 plus as an example, let's now look at how to assign electron configurations to the ions of transition metals. The important thing to remember is that whenever transition metal atoms lose electrons to form positive ions, the first electrons to be lost are always those in the s orbital of its outer shell. It's only after these have been removed that it's then possible for electrons to also be removed from its d orbitals. So, with the vanadium 3 plus, we begin with the electron configuration of vanadium, which we already knew was AR 4s2 3d3. And three of these electrons must be removed to form vanadium 3 plus. So, the first two electrons that get removed are the two from the 4s orbital. After that, one of the d electrons also gets removed. So this gives the electron configuration of vanadium 3 plus ions as being AR 3d2. Again, you can pause my explanation while attempting to complete the electron configurations of copper 1 plus, copper 2 plus, Fe 3 plus and chromium 3 plus before comparing them with my answers. Beginning with the electron configuration of copper as AR 4s1 3d10, it is the 4s electrons that gets removed when forming SCU 1 plus ion. So its electron configuration, we just take away that one 4s1 electron from the original copper electron configuration, and this gives Cu 1 plus as being AR 3d10. In the case of copper 2 plus, the next electron to be removed comes from the 10d electrons. So that gives copper 2 plus the electron configuration of AR 3D9. Now, with the Fe3 plus, starting with the AR 4S2 3D6 electron configuration of the Fe atom and removing its two 4S electrons first and then one of its six D electrons gives AR 3D5 because the two 4S electrons went away first and to produce Fe3 plus we need to take away another one electron which came from one of those six 3D electrons and that's how Fe3 plus is AR 3D5. Then with the chromium 3 plus begin with the electron configuration of chromium which was AR 4s1 3d5. Then remove its one 4s electron first and we need to now remove another two electrons so that we end up with chromium 3 plus and then two of its 5d electrons therefore will also need to be removed and this gives AR 3d3. So in conclusion you should now have a good understanding of how to obtain the electron configurations of transition metal atoms and ions.